more or nothing. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of uh, More or Nothing with uh, Ryan and Max. As always, a plethora of things to get stuck into. But first things first, we had a wonderful time in Bristol during the week, sitting down <laughs> with the Maxitron, Wills and your little pal, Harry Randall. And you both called that it was coming. The storm was a coming. And Gloucester were going to get it, and they did. They did. They did. It got it got naughty out there. It was it was a great game for the neutral to watch. Actually, some very high level aesthetic code being put on display. Well, hold on a minute. Let's start. Let's start with our mate Randall. Let's start with Barry, Big the Big rat Big. man, the were rat, the weasel human, the stoat. Yeah, he was. He was. How good. He was on flame. <laughs> Just well, just straight off the bat, so that people listening or watching are going, hold on a minute. Well, they've done a bit with him, and that that is coming out on Wednesday. Worry, but we we chatted with Rands, and we pretty much got him on a course for a couple of meat pies, didn't we, Max? How I think so. Him? I think we fueled him with the finest burgers in all of Bristoldom, and that led to his um his furious surge in form. I mean, he's been playing well, but cheeky brace, one off a, a show and go, and a, a little uh, quick tap. Chip over the top. Um, oh. Unbelievable finish. Very uh, nice. The, the bounce. It's like he had it on a string, Max. It's like oh, he had it on a string. The old chip, better, chip and chase. Right. There's nothing better. Oh, what, the more or nothing ever, string? Have you, yeah, have you ever done it? Have you ever done it, Max? Chip and have chase? Have I ever done it? A chip and chase? Man, it's never, ever entered my mind. Not once. I wish it had, though. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be playing prop if it ever came into my mind. Well, John Welsh, John Welsh-esque, isn't it? This is, remember that? John Welsh. Oh, mate, do you know that's me hitting out the line and he makes the line break? <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Yeah, oh, Petty Fanua's no. just inside him. And I'm like, don't let the big fella get any head of steam. And then Welshie just gets the ball. Line break, chip over top, panic, because he's in more space than Buzz Aldrin. You know what happens when that happens, when a prop's there. Freak out. Yeah, no. Um, I wish. One day, maybe. Running out of days, though. Yeah. We'll stay on Bristol then. So Bristol Gloucester, how? Why did they turn it around so much? Like, how did they absolutely annihilate Gloucester? Nice. Well, I'm not sure it was like it wasn't sort of such a massive change in form. I think we've been there thereabouts against some very good opposition, um, but obviously there was a big opportunity. Derby, um, like the whole week, I, I sensed a lot of frustration with the with the lads, like training was getting a bit snappy, boys at each other's throats. You know then something's about to happen on a Saturday. Um, boys were just kicking off and you could just... Well, Rand, Rand, Rand said, Big Piece said it. He said he was trying to scrap in the week, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Big yes. Piece was scrapping. Big Piece, Big Piece and Genji almost, almost went at it. I was like, that would have been funny because it would have been more... It would have been pretretty one sided yeah. but um wait, but wait, was Max funny. wasn't Genji whilst we were filming then psyching out Rand, right psyching yeah, big piece out with the text him. yeah, what did he text him exactly. they're besties, but they always just play mind games with each other, yeah, Genji was just like, you're out of order, mate, you're so out of order, you need to come over right now and speak to me, something like that. <laughs> I love those ones, those are my favorites, you know, someone just texts you out the blue like, yeah, coach needs to see you right now. <laughs> You've, you've been so out of order and you just leave it like that and just like silence the phone. <laughs> just let them sketch. Yeah, one of my favourites. Yeah, he was talking out, wasn't he though? Big Piece. He was like, oh, I don't know what this is about. Like, yeah, Big Piece was freaking out. Yeah, that's good. Um, that was was, uh, was Pat happy? Was Pat happy after the game? Yeah, I think that was a, a palpable sense of relief. But yeah, he was he was, he was was a happy man. Um, boys came through, I thought. Uh, Viri had a strong game as well. Vakatawa came through. You see that chip through to Max Maylands. Ooh, uh, very naughty, yeah. brass. Very naughty, brass. Yeah, very naughty. Uh, Max, tell me this, because I know it's obviously a point that we need to bring up. You didn't play again. Is there a little bit of you when you watch? Because I used to feel it. I'll be honest. When I used to like watch, were you a little bit like, oh, like, oh God, why have they gone so well and I'm not involved? <laughs> what, are you, <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Say the words, <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> I didn't. You, I you, are you accusing Max of not, not wanting them to win? No, 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 no. Because I'm like I, but I probably if there was times where I maybe think I want them to win, but maybe just by one. <laughs> I want them to win, but I want these guys to play terribly. 
what a shocking front row no, performance. Not quite. <laughs> no, I'm too old for that now. I used to be like that. Super like, yeah. Hopefully he's terrible, but we've yeah. done. Yeah. Getting picked up in the scrum and a <laughs> <laughs> couple of out, up like toes. He messes that up. A few missed tackles. Happy days. Yeah. But none of that now. You're happy. Oh no, I'm a I'm a stone cold diplomat, old boy. No, it's all good. Yeah. And it's a long it's a long old season. It's exactly. a long old season. Exactly. What are you wearing, Max? Are you just wearing a, is that a beater, is it? Yeah. It looks like, it, it it looks like a GPS vest from here. Yeah, you like that dodgy boy. Look at that yeah, yeah. He's always got some <laughs> flashing out. You got the man with glands bouncing. You stop it, you boys. See, I couldn't, I couldn't wear that in my house because I've got four kids and I can't afford the heating, so it's fucking freezing in here. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, it's a bit toasty, actually, today. <laughs> yeah, I had to turn it off. so hot in his, <laughs> in his childless flat. <laughs> He's mm, got his little dog on, a, on a, one of those electric <laughs> wheels running the, yeah, running yeah. the heater out. Um, so what was the final score, Bristol Gloucester? Oh, it was 51-27, I think. I can't remember. But Lovely. Jamal Ford-Robinson got a brace from the short from the short game and then um, Lewis Rees Samet with a couple of um, naughty finishes, actually, to be fair to the big fella. Again, we were talking about him. He featured featured heavily in their attack. He was, yeah, you can't, you can't coach speed. That's for damn okay. sure. No. Did you catch any up, catch up with any of the boys after? Uh, no, nah, it was all pretty um, cut and dry, pretty quick. Yeah, I think they're they're in a bit of a rough spot now. Uh, the Gloucester lads, so we'll see how see how they kind of react to this one. Don't you think Mark has changed a bit, Max, since his uh, like his big you know cameo on uh, on Instagram? Like Mark, <sighs> it's great. Mark it's... nut face Edwards. <laughs> Just the worst I, th- I think it's got to his head. I even think he's starting to wear different clothes now. Look, I'm surprised he doesn't have a beater on today. The viral thinking go go straight to the head, can't it, Marky boy? But boys, do you know my most exciting thing? Right, we'll we'll, we'll stop. We'll, we'll ask you a few questions in a minute. But Archie Curzon, <laughs> the the CEO of Clapham, he's come out. I I threw it out there. What about Alex Payne? Versus Mark the Nutface Edwards in a UFC fight to the death. What a dreadful call! And I, I, was... I think I think that would just wouldn't look great to watch. But I'd I'd be there. I'd be in your corner, Mark. Whoa, 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 Max! Why not? Awful. Who was? Who was? I don't. Mate, you ever seen guys who can't fight try and yeah, grab this just sit there Hat sweating? No, yeah. no, no, Nutface like nut Mark. What, hold on. What, what school did um Mark uh, did uh, Pano go to? Eaton. Oh, perfect! Like oh, both, both in your gowns. Like, think coming out, bah, 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 and like hoods up with the with no, both no. with your gowns on from whatever school with the crest on, and then fight to the death. Boy, I think people want to see it. How, have you been stopped in the street, Mark? <laughs> no, I've had no yes and no. There's been somebody who was like, oh, saw the saw the clip. They didn't go, oi nut, oi nut face, you knobhead. I was like. <laughs> Nutface wanker. <laughs> well, uh, don't throw the wanker in, but if you do see Mark about, feel free to shout, hey, Nutface, good to see you, bro. Because the other thing that people got into a very dark hole of Googling Nutface, and I actually haven't done it yet, but I can don't, only imagine what don't, is Don't Google up. it at work. Uh, and, be, and then no, imagery. if you're in a loving relationship, just clear the search history afterwards, I think, because it's just... Mm, it's, indeed, it's, indeed. But, but make sure you jump on the comment section, uh, slip into our DMs as per usual, and let us know if you'd like to see no, Parking Bin Pano, also known as Mark Nutface Edwards versus Alex Payne in the UFC. I mean, what, what if it wasn't UFC, Max, what is it? What are we going to get them to do? Uh, it, I think it would be better if we went like full Harry Potter vibes. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, so a pretending. game of quidditch? Just one. A one, on one. Just one, <laughs> and they're just screaming at each other. <laughs> Just expect over <laughs> all day. Oh, <laughs> that's it. You can, you'll, you'll be happy, Parker. Pano's definitely severing, by the way. Definitely. Oh, oh, boys, there we are. There's a clip. There's a, actually a clip in, in Harry Potter, isn't it? Where Harry Potter's going it, and they're doing it end to end. So I'm getting straight on to reface app, whatever it is, and I'm putting <laughs> your head on Harry Potter and his head on. on uh, who's, who's it? Draco Malfoy. 
Oh, amazing. Absolutely incredible. It's one of those things, though, with the comment, by the way, that he made, and you guys, I didn't feel like I could even like it or say anything on it, because I'm like, well, I don't want to endorse this. I also want to make it look like I want to get in a fight. You know? <laughs> what? Where, what would the BBC say if they saw you in a charity UFC fight? <laughs> as as Nutface, where somehow I have to get it, that in as my finishing move. Kapow! <laughs> Nutface! Even more so, like, would you bring the wife and kids to the fight? Or what, to watch me get my fight? head kicked in? No. <laughs> Taylor looks handy at pugilism. He looks yeah. really useful. He, he's, yeah, he's. Oh I mean, is he, if he's been to a boxing gym once, he's then. Been, yeah, he's been for a camp. He, he went for a camp. He's going to have some skills. <sighs> Obviously not. I'll take it like a sprint off. I could start. I could no, do that. Okay. Stop playing yourself down. I don't want to hear it anymore because I don't want you to play yourself down. Oh, really? I'll, do you I'll think I'm sharking Pano? I'm actually yeah, like a back. street fighter at heart. Max, if you had to do something, if you had to go and do another fighting sport, what would it be? Like a charity fight, what would you do? Because I'm pretty sure John Welsh just did, a ju- he just had his first professional jiu-jitsu fight. How'd he go? I think he lost, but he said it was done on points. He said it was the most boring thing anyone would have ever watched, just two fat blokes lying each- on each other. No, that's literally what like, <laughs> rapping looks like. Yeah. Uh, that's what he said it looked like. He said it was pathetic. But um, <laughs> yeah, what would you... I mean, would you would you go for a would you go for a, would you enter into a boxing match? Yeah, but I'd like to do like one of those white collar jobbies where you do the whole camp, you know, like you train up for it. Oh, you'd have to train. You couldn't just swan on. No, I'd like, I wouldn't mind that. That'd be quite fun. Right, wrestling. I do like grappling, match, but surely. as you said, it just looks terrible. What does sorry? Wrestling. Like grappling, yeah. like Welchie's. What Welchie was saying, yeah, it's literally like just two elephant seals going at it. Yeah. See, I was I went to Blaze this morning. Bex made me go to Blaze because you get a little bit round around the gut, and uh, Blaze is like a hit class. And they you have to do boxing in it. You have to punch. Like, my shoulders just burn out instantly. Yeah, the delts get tired, don't they? I don't. Well, I don't it have any shoulders. Really so my, bones, my bones, my bones get tired really quick. <laughs> the fluffy trout. Yeah, I've never seen a trout throw a hook before. Let's talk about. A, a big result in uh, the Saints versus Saris. Surprised? Mm. I was. I was surprised. I thought Northampton looked. But they didn't look surprised. They looked composed. They were predatory. Like Their poise was on point. They were just... And I've also liked their sneaky depth. Like, off the bench, they got mad impact coming on. I think they played... They sort of out Saris, like Saris in areas of the the field in sort of terms of kick chase and stuff they were fighting for everything um yeah definitely deserved winners it was it was a class performance and um some people might say oh well Farrell wasn't playing all this but man I don't think it would have made a difference I thought um I thought Northampton went went there to do a job and they absolutely smashed and grabbed it yeah, they were clinical, weren't they? They, they, they really took were, chances yeah. and they were they looked pretty sharp to be fair to them. So that's them, even on points with Saris now. I don't know why. I just thought that was it. Saris would start running away with it after last week. But um yeah, fair play to him. And I suppose whilst we're on that, let's talk about Owen Farrell and uh, him obviously stepping down. Am I right in saying it's just international rugby at the moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And only for the Six Nations is what he said, or just for the for the foreseeable future. Uh, it sounded you know, like he's step, He's not going to feature in the Six Nations, so I don't think he's gone like I might or may. It's just that's that's where they're at at the moment. He wants to be... Well, everything implies that, you know, he's continuing with Saracens, of course, because it's his family sort of thing. And I think the it's a horrible culmination of, of just getting constantly battered on social media, but also bigger than that, on, on media generally, all these ex-players, all these pundits, all these journalists effectively saying, why do you keep getting picked? And I think that's taken its toll, which is horrible. Yeah, do, do you reckon, right? So I was thinking about this earlier, and it's a terrible thing that he's, he's felt the need to step down from the best thing you can do in rugby, which is play for your country, right? And he's had to step away from it because of the abuse and the bloody torture he gets from all these muppets out there on social media and whatever, and a few of the people in the media, like us, we're a media, actually, if you think about it, but we're all right. Um, 
but don't you think it's it's an absolute disgrace that he's had to step away from it because of those morons. But what I was thinking, right, is there something in it where people are saying, is he is he an England captain that's got, he's probably got the most abuse as an England captain. And then, I, then that got me thinking, is that because of his position? And then it got me thinking, are there many tens that are captain? Because it's such a instrumental, crucial part of the game. They've got so much on their shoulders already, running the game plan, kicking, most of them kick. So they've got that on their shoulders. They've got so much going on that actually chuck captaincy on top of that. It's a lot. It's a lot to take on. And then if you're not performing well and it's your captain, well, you play your captain every week. Whereas I was thinking as a back row, you can almost hide in the shadows. You could be not playing that well and still get by without people going, he's absolutely shy because you're not in the spotlight all the time. Whereas as a 10, you are in the spotlight. You are, it's, it's all on your shoulders, right? I think that's a... Ma- Max, thoughts on that? Am I, am I, am I going somewhere that I don't, shouldn't or is, can no, you I think, think, I think the, yeah, the, there's a point, there's a point there to be made, but also I think a big part of Owen's game is his leadership qualities. That's part of what makes him so good at, the game like he is an exemplary leader I have the theory that the reason he's sort of taken so much abuse though is because he's got this sort of Teflon Don sort of aura about him like he's the toughest pinata at the party you can crack him you can bang him but none of the candy falls out you know what I mean (laughs) so like he's been taking all this abuse for so long but you could never tell he never made it clear he never sort of showed that vulnerability and now it's all come to a head, um, sadly. Yeah, it is. It is fucking sad, isn't it? That no, it is you very sad. Because you want, um, I, like, listen, we we always talk about that ten position. I suppose he plays twelve a lot, doesn't he? And he's played with Ford, and he's played with Marcus Smith at twelve. So maybe my point's not completely right. I'm just, yeah, I was just trying to think. Like, do many tens captain teams? And now, listen, the comment, comment section will probably go fucking mental. No, but there must be something, Ryan. You've, you've, you're totally right about because he's far more in the spotlight as the place kicker. So when he, when he misses, he has a great game, a couple of you know assists and everything, but he misses six against Bristol. What's the headline? Farrell misses. Yeah, Farrell yeah, misses kicks yeah. in Saracen's victory. You're like, well, hang on. He had a good game, ball in hand. He just wasn't great off the tee. And I think you'd multiply that by 100 when he plays for England. And he never used to get it in his earlier career because he was so metronomic. And then suddenly it's like, well, we've got these new fancy people that we want in. You know, we want Marcus Smith in or George Ford to be playing, all these kind of things. And, you know, it, he's just taken that hit over and over. And I think it's kind of bizarrely a combination of what you're both saying. I definitely think Max's point is so true. He, it yeah. never looked like there was a vulnerability there. And I think loads of people should be quite reflective about seeing that and being like, were you a dickhead? And I know we have had a chat about things where we've kind of gone, oh, just put Smith in or whatever. You know, these things that are kind of almost throwaway comments and they weigh, they weigh on people, they weigh on families. And Yeah, that's it. Well, that's it. Well, good luck to him. Hopefully, he obviously is injured, isn't he? He was, he, he was out of the game at the weekend because he was injured, but hopefully he comes back and absolutely smashes it and shuts everybody up. Is there an element though also of, sorry, just not, I know we're closing it off, but, that semi-final performance, he's dropping goals. He's, but he was phenomenal, right? Absolutely phenomenal in a World Cup semi-final. They were supposed to get thrashed in. Everybody thought that England would get hammered, and he led it from <coughs> the front. I, I just can't see how the haters would still look at that and go, "Oh yeah, but he's not." But we, but he's not good. Yeah, it'd be bloody interesting to see if they got into that final, eh? Hmm. And what yeah. would have happened then? Uh, like I, I saw a clip the other day, and he was signing autographs, and there's some knob end behind shouting, shouting abuse at him. And the bloke's got his kid on his shoulders, and you're thinking, "What are you doing, you absolute dickhead?" Yeah, but other um, than win a World Cup, what else does he have to prove? Do you know what I mean? Bloke's uh, consummate. Bloke that's problem. That's yeah. problem. Record point scorer. Yeah. Sneaky young as well. He's like only thirty, isn't he? Like it's. It's, it's it's madness to me, but yeah, if people pay pay to go and watch matches. They think they uh, they almost own you. I mean, fuck, no, if, if 
If you go to if you both go to Bath, you pretty much do own the players at eighty pound a ticket. That is fucking crazy. <laughs> Oh, fucking Still can't get over that. <laughs> fucking madness. <laughs> but other than that, you know what I mean. It's um, and it, I suppose it's the pressure. It's the pressure that, it's, that money's put on people as well because everyone will know he's obviously the highest paid now at Saris, and it's the same with Finn. If Finn was absolute dog turd down at Bath, and people are paying, I'm going to up it ninety pound a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> can't believe it's three hundred quid a ticket at Bath. Yeah. <laughs> then. Then would he be getting the same stick? You know, like is he gonna is he gonna get the same amount of abuse? I think Finn does get a little bit of stick, but nowhere near, nowhere near the amount that I'm proud of it. As a sort of onto the similar vein, we're talking big hotshot tens, and it was a battle of the tens between Quinns and Sale, and probably safely say that it was a big. Uh, a victory for Marcus Smith. Bloody hell, it was 36 3 against Sales. I think that's the first time in two years that Quinns have not conceded a try in the Premiership. Do you know that? Good. Are you, hey, are you doing some research? God, you're such a noise. Pundit now. Wilson over here. Pundit, pundit, pundit. Yeah, that's probably not true, but it sounded good, didn't it? It did. Yeah, that's mental. Really Absolutely mental. Um, Sal just looked out of sorts, though, Max, didn't they? Yeah, I thought they just they looked a bit off, didn't they? They were a bit flat. Let's be honest, they weren't where they were meant to be. Stuff just wasn't clicking for them. Lots of unforced errors. Um, but yeah, Quinns were oh, they were naughty. <laughs> yeah, cutting himself naughty. Don Brandt busy. Uh, Mark Smith obviously pulling strings. Cade Murley, he's got to be involved. February, come on, come on now. Bloke is an absolute racehorse, man's a centaur. Um, All right, here's one for you then. Mm. What about Will Josephs? He's been Ooh. incredible. Did is he? That last finish. Is he better than his brother yet, or will he be better than his brother? There's he's a question. For you. Okay. Okay. The, he's not better than his brother at this point yet. in their careers. If we run them parallel, like his brother, people forget how freakish Jonathan Joseph was when he first came onto the scene. Um, Started for Weir, moved eventually into the centres when Elvis Sevaili and Mapasua sort of moved on. But um, it's looking it's looking interesting. He's definitely a weightier human, though. There's something yeah. a bit more robust about William Joseph. Thicker. Thicker through the thigh. A bit more of a power centre. Am I uh, right in saying there's another brother that plays as well? No, no, just... just, just, just it's those. just those two. Yeah. Fair play to him, though. He was outstanding in the game as well. He really was. He really was. Hell of a boy. Lovely lad. Lovely lad. Um, good fun. So, yeah, I'm actually really excited for him. What's that? Is he good fun? Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, yeah. He's a, he's a good man. He's a good boy. Yeah. Um, that's all you need. Yeah, that's all you need. He's got a firm, good, good head on his shoulders. He's learned, he'll be hopefully learning from his brother's mistakes. And, um, you know how that goes. Always for the best. And um, let's talk about the bit that obviously got Nutface Mark so excited was the punch up. Like that is what gets Nutface Mark going nowadays. <laughs> yeah, about that. that was tasty, wasn't it? <laughs> Nutface Mark, were you in the living room? Like <laughs> <laughs> Nutface him. I actually think I heard someone shout Nutface him out, like from behind as well. Um, they did get a bit tasty. Who's the? Who's the? Um, was it the tight head for Sale though? He was getting a bit chopsy, wasn't he, when he's that far down? Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was, it it was, was Johnny, Johnny Hill. Up on Gunningham South. So Johnny Hill's got his his elbow in um, Gunningham South's mush. And then you've got Cow and Dickey. Cow and Dickey's riding the body, the, the wave, and like laughing on the way down because he's just enjoying himself in the melee. <laughs> that was my, that was my like key moment of that that I enjoyed. Who's number one for sale though? McIntyre. Oh, um, it was Cy McIntyre, yeah. McIntyre. He was he was the reason old Cullen himself got upset though. You could see. No, he I was thought it was Gus War. Oh, well, to be fair, there was about four or five of them around. Cullen but... himself takes the short side carry, doesn't he? Gets gets banged. Yeah. But you know, like you you're like trailing and you get banged, and you throw a body off you, thinking you're a big man. So he throws Gus War off him. Gus War takes exception to this. He's still holding on to him. 
And then Sai's got to back up his nine because Gus was only only little. He's only little. And um, Gunningham Sarah's got like the stature on the man. And then it all get, kicks off, yeah. And then Johnny Hill, obviously, he gets very aroused by anything that involves handbags. So they're Bloody all John- into it. I was going to say, Johnny No Chin Hill. What about him without a chin? He doesn't have a chin anymore. Where did that go? <laughs> what? 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 Like his chin. His chin's disappeared. It's like, it, I, I don't know why. I just, I just forget what he looks like. He had a beard. When did he shave that off? Because he doesn't look like he's got a chin anymore. I think he's always looked like that, hasn't he? Yeah. I, I don't, don't know. I wouldn't say he's had a vast transformation. No, really it, looked like, it just shocked me. Well, maybe it's his hair then. Something looked like it, it was missing. It looked like his chin was missing off his, <laughs> his head. <laughs> it's he's a big fella, though. He's definitely put on a bit. <laughs> maybe that's why. Maybe his body's got bigger and his head looks smaller. <laughs> Whereas my head looks bigger and my body's getting smaller. So John Barkley always calls me a lollipop when he sees me. <laughs> Brilliant. Stewie from Family Guy. <laughs> yeah. It will have run, run, no. run, 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 run. <laughs> but we did, yeah, a, li- <laughs> a little bit of pushing and shoving, but um, Quinn's absolutely dominating that one down at the stoop. They did, they did. And uh, that's them up to third now. Quinn's up to third. Sales still still top, though, aren't they? Are sales still top? Yep, Sales still top. Bath joint first with them and then Quinn's just behind in, in third so yeah and the old premiership's looking pretty interesting now quick words on um, uh, Finn and Bath just kind of running away with it against Dexter yeah I thought Alfie Barbary was very good Alfie the Barbarian dominated Sam Underhill dominating Elliot Stug back in there doing an absolute job with Charlie Yules in the row uh, but yeah, the the backs, man, they've got so much firepower now. Finn, um, I think Spencer's got to be involved this February as well. He's just been unbelievable. Him and Finn together is a hell of a combo. Because uh, you've got like Ben Spencer's like sort of game administration, that like elite short kicking game. And then you've got Finn who's full like, look at my hands. Oh, wait, they're here. Oh, wait, they're over there. Like that kind of vibe. So now they're just sort of experimenting with a bit of misdirection. Uh, Big Joe getting on the end of the cutler. Um, mate, they look good. I'll tell you what will be interesting to see how that affects Scotland's selections in the Six Nations with Finn playing so much and so well with Cam Redpath. Yeah, mate, Cam was yeah. very good. That's what I was going to say. Cam Redpath, very good. It'll be really interesting to see if that has any sort of, because obviously there's Hugh Jones, Sione Tuopolotu. I'll tell you what, we'll get onto it in a minute, but Matt Scott, how he's not. Yeah, not yeah Matt Scott, Scott should get another runner, shouldn't he? So you look at this and you go, fucking hold on a minute. Scott's yeah, got Scott's serious a- centre. Um, that 10-12 axis, whether that weighs into Scotland's thinking, Gregor Townsend's definitely going to be looking at that going, ooh, that could work nicely for me. That could work nicely for me. So interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. It, I, I like it as well. I like it, but I do love Hugh Jones and Big Sione Tuopolotu as well. And I'm missing loads of other people. But Max Quick, you mentioned Ben Spencer needs to be in there. Obviously, Rans. Now that you know, we love the guy after our hangout last week, and him, a couple of meat pies, and looking so sharp. Should he be coming back into the conversation? Because people seem to forget that he was the starting scrum half for England last year in the Six Nations. Yeah, I would love Rans in there, but I feel like that's not what. Oh, what's we face? Picking Mitchell, isn't he? So. Yeah, but that's what you, that's what Rans was sort of saying, and when that episode comes out, people will hear it. Is he, he? It's the way he plays is different at Bristol. Steve, isn't it? Steve he, wants something different. Like he wants like a guy who administrates the game, controls the game from nine. And I feel like I don't know if Rans is like fully. Oh man, if you want, I mean, I'd want to see him in there. Obviously, I'd love to see him in there. Um, but he brings the pace. He ups the yeah. pace. Danny Care often on the bench for England. So that's true. He, he could be that guy. Like, he could be that. He's yeah, maybe yeah. the he you know comes that. in and picks up the pace off of something a bit different. And listen, he's now one of my best mates, Rans. So you know, yeah, big piece, big yeah. piece. Yeah. Watch the show on Wednesday. We get up close and personal with Harry Randall. We find out what it's really like to work with Max. We find out all about his fun career so far. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a really it was a, it was a good episode, and we're all together. In, uh, in Bristol. It was good fun, wasn't it, boys? 
Yeah. And whilst I've got this opportunity, as per usual, we would like to say a huge thank you to Wolf Craig Distillers. They've been our number one supporter, boys. Realistically, they're our only supporter. And uh, you can head over to wolfcraig.com where you can pick up some lovely little bits for Christmas. But Max, what is the uh, what is that website again, please? <gasps> Wolfcraig.com. Go and check them out. God, I've got that blockbuster voice down now, lads. You nailed it. Let's nailed if it. If I was like a 90s film trailer narrator, fuck, I would have been rich. Now they don't do those guys anymore. You know, like yeah. Ryan Wilson, Mark Tudor Edwards, and a critically acclaimed motion picture. <laughs> it'll come them. back round. It'll come back round. People are wearing round. flares again, mate. People are wearing fucking flares again, so you'll be all right. Was you were here, there, and everywhere last week. We saw you, you were taking... After having a couple of pints in Cork. Oh, yes, Max. I had my first pint of Beamish. Ever had a Beamish? What's a Beamish? Oh, exactly. I was in Ireland on oh, I was in Ireland on Wednesday and I had a pint of Guinness. And I said, oh, I'm down in Cork on uh, Friday. And I said, I'll have a pint down there. And they said, no, don't be drinking um, Guinness down there. You either drink Murphy's or Beamish. Um, a, cr- a pint of creamy Beamy, as they call it. And it was bloody lovely. You shouldn't really have too many of them before you uh, commentate. So I, I only had one. I only had one. I only had one. Don't worry. Um, but in the second pub, when I was leaving, as I walk out the pub, Max, mm-hmm. right, I've just had a lovely bit. Of, I'm on my own. I've landed in Cork, day of the game. And I'd probably say it was not one of the nicest establishments, but I was starving. So I've ordered the sausage and mash. I thought well, I'll do a good sausage down here and mashed potato, obviously. And not only has a, a family-sized platter of eight sausages come out with mashed potato, <laughs> but a lovely gravy, demolished it, I had a pint of creamy beamy, you know, and got rucksack on because I'm commentating, and I thought I could walk to the ground from here because I've sent Simon Z by a picture, and I've gone, mate, I'm in this pub, fancy coming down for a pint. And uh, he's gone, Wilson, whatever you do, get the fuck out of there as soon as you can. <laughs> So from when I've got in there, it's now filling up with loads of Munster fans. Anyway, as I'm walking out, I, I wish they'd done it before, but it was just as I was leaving on my own with my rucksack, proper rucksack wanker, and open the door. Ryan Wilson, you're a c- <laughs> <laughs> What what can you all I all I could do with that was smile and go, cheers mate, and just give him a thumbs up. Yeah, that's what we can do. Just smile yeah. and wave. Smile yeah, and wave. Smile and wave, boy. So that was quite funny. Uh, we went straight to a monster like fortress oh, pub where they all yeah. gather, knowing how much they yeah. all hate you. Yeah. Your reputation yeah. precedes you, Mr. Wilson. I don't think it was a good idea, but um, I got out of there alive and caught up with my old mate Zebo. It's good to see him. Wait, wait, wait! I just need to get back to the. What is a creamy beamy? It's just. It's like a. It's ba- uh, well. What I gather, right, is it's like a. I don't want to offend anyone here, but it's like the cheaper version of Guinness. It's like just say it's like a Guinness. Like, Why did you say cheaper? Just go. It's like a Guinness. It was, it, was, was that, version. it was only like four pound twenty. Or something. Like, you know. Yeah, but it was lovely. Anyway, did the game, managed to jump on the uh, charter flight back with the boys actually afterwards, which was an absolute godsend. Got me back to Glasgow at two in the morning. Was it a bit of a um, downer of a of a flight? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, they didn't start very well, Glasgow. 19 nil down after like pff, not even 15, 20 minutes, I don't think. Um, but they managed to claw it back a bit. And Frank Smith, he, 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 to be fair to him, after the game, he said he was happy that he saw the boys had enough to sort of pull it back. But they put it back and then Munster would take over. And Munster were good, give them their due. Um, but uh, yeah, ended 40 29 to Munster. And uh, that means Leinster leapfrog them and Glasgow go to second, but still second in the league. Boys will be all right. Did you, They'll be okay. Did you know so, that you were uh, featuring very heavily on the uh, BBC Sports? Sport live text website. So they had the game on there doing all the commentary and it was they were using you via play and it was Ryan Wilson and it was taking snippets of your uh, comments throughout oh, the no. game. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Oh god. No, it, it actually sounded like you'd had a sort of mildly successful professional career. So it was like all right. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he sounded like you had too many pints of Guinness. No, it was all right. It sounded like you knew maybe that you'd been in one of these games and that you knew a thing or two about rugby. 
Uh, yeah, so, well, you know, so yeah, you were right. Yeah, but I was a little bit like, I don't think he knows that they're that he's being chopped up here because I'm like, no, hey, it was good. You're fine. You were, yeah. you were okay. You were, a lot of people slid into my DMs because I did say that Oli Jaeger, who's plays uh, prop for them. Do you remember him? He's played over in uh, well, Super Four, whatever you call it. Yeah, the uh, tight end, I think he is, with the big mustache, bald head. Well, anyway, I said he looks like the baddie from Sonic and. He does. He, Dr. Him, really. Robotnik, he does. He does look like. He, he... Hold on. What, hold on, Max. What did you call him? Dr. Robotnik, the. The Eggman. Yeah, the Eggman. The Eggman. Because yeah. <laughs> I was calling him Eggman. So then I was like, he looks like Eggman. And then everyone's going, it's not Eggman, it's Dr. Robotnik. But Eggman was his nickname. Oh, they're, wasn't they're, both, they're both. Yeah. They Same can play. They can play. Yeah. I got a lot of upset people saying it's not Eggman, it's Doctor Robot. Some but Sonic purists out there. Yeah, My guys, God. good, yeah. good. So I just called him. I just called him Eggman every time he got near the ball, and uh, yeah, had a bit of fun with it. Uh, perfect timing for getting into what was a heck of a weekend in the URC. Some big, big results. Ryan, let's kick off with. Leinster snatching the win. Oh, yeah. Go over there. Sports ground, Galway, one of my favourite places to play away, actually. You go down to the Key Street where they serve a lovely pint of Guinness. Talking about pints, hey, how fitting is that? Matt Hansen back starting in the team rather than sitting in the stands drinking pints. Did you see that? <laughs> He's getting along to games just sitting in the, with the fans drinking pints. How good. You've got to love it, haven't you? What a bloke. Yeah, um, but he was he was on fire. Set up two tries um, big Jack's Nino Neymar, he's back at the helm for Leinster. He's obviously shitting bricks. He's thinking, oh my God, we're going to lose this one. 19-8 to Leinster it was, around 65 minutes. But Caelan Blade, who actually got man of the match. To Connor, you mean, sorry, Spot. to Connor at this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, okay, sorry. It was 19-8 to Leinster. So Leinster were, were going all right. But Caelan Blade suddenly kicks in, sparks Connor, and off they go. And... They end up in front right up until the 80th minutes. Clocks in the red. Leinster are losing 22-19. And oh, Kieran Frawley steps a few people and he goes in for his try. And Leinster do it right at the death, which oh. uh, you've got to feel for Connor because I think they realistically should have won that one. Um, and Leinster, and again, it doesn't help Glasgow because... Uh, Leinster then leapfrog back at the top. But that shows why they're so good. So, yeah, Leinster come through with that one, scrape it, and a, another win for them. But Connacht were pretty unfortunate. Right, take us to South Africa with the Bulls battering the Sharks. Well, Max, the real question is, who would win in a fight, a bull or a shark? It depends. Is oh. the bull in aqueous medium for the shark? And it must the be bull. saline aqueous medium, otherwise the shark can't breathe. Unless it's a bull shark. And it can go in brackish water. Oh, that's here. Yeah. Well, they might be. They might be thinking about that. The sharks at the moment, the way they're mm-hmm. going to combine with the bulls to have the bull sharks, the Hollywood bet bull sharks. <laughs> Bit of a lot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but now, nah, in all in all seriousness, um, I thought the sharks would put up more of a fight, um, especially with all their big boys back, all the Springboks back in there. But they didn't, and the bulls. I think they had four tries before half time, which. Isn't what you want to see, um, but fair play to the Bulls. They were bloody good. As we said, your old mate Willie LaRue is back out there doing all things good for them. And uh, yeah, Bulls on top of the Sharks, tore them a new one. It's hard up at altitude though, boys. Is that why? Were the Sharks out of water up at altitude? <laughs> sharks out of water. I just, yeah, the Bulls, that, to be fair... We thought they were going to be good. They've been going well. The other South African teams haven't really been firing yet. I mean, the Stormers are still down at the 10th and Sharks. Boys are struggling. They've only had one win. What's and, what's? Why is that, do you reckon? I don't know. Well, I did say they'd have... Now they've got all their big guns back. They would they would go a bit better, but you'd think they would have put up more of a fight against the, the Bulls and... And they didn't. So I'm not sure who they got next week. Oh, well, we're going to European rugby, don't we? We're going to European rugby next week. Indeed. So um, all changes. Oh, it's free. Who are you guys? You guys have got Lyon, right? Oh, Lyon. Yeah. Ooh. Hold on. Who plays for Lyon? Which Fijian? 
semi profit randradra oh yes oh that's exciting i know mr semi meow meow wolf wolf's coming back to town should be fun oh, really? should be fun i can't wait to just give him all sorts well if i play probably not so i won't be able to you will be don't talk like that <laughs> let's quickly yeah. let, let's obviously make a mention to my dark horses benetton they're not benetton trevise anymore they're just it's benetton so oh, benetton, benetton They've they've beaten Ospreys. They've done it again. That's it. Five wins for the boys in green. They've been uh, they've been outstanding again. I'm just I, I called it early. That's why I'm so happy. I think it's just because I called it so early. Um, the only thing Ospreys didn't have a few of their internationals. I I almost felt like they. I I oh God, don't get yourself in trouble, Ryan. But I almost felt like they thought. It's too hard a place to go and win the Ospreys. We probably won't win over there. So they rested Jack Morgan, George North, Dewey Lake, Adam Beard, all the all the oh, Welsh wow. international boys. Seriously. They were all rested. Yeah. Part of me feels like they sent a young team over. And it listen, like it was it was in the in the balance. It was thirteen all like a three or four minutes to go. Um but Benetton managed to sneak it right at the end. So to be fair to Ospreys, they had a young team out and they played pretty well, but Benetton. But wait, Ryan, the if win. they're sending like a like a younger side away to Italy, I mean, there's you know, there's a lot of tough away matches if you're if you're the Ospreys in the uh, in the URC. You know, you got to go to South Africa, you got to go over to Ireland, you got to go and play Glasgow and Edinburgh, who are going well, like. Yeah, but what 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 I'm saying is, um, listen, maybe I've got it completely wrong. Maybe they had to rest. You know, Scotland, you only had to play five games in a row, and then you mu- you have to rest the players. So, like international players in at Glasgow, they get played for four or five games, I think it is, and then you get rested one game. Um, so maybe there is something there. But I just felt like gone are the days when you would throw a young team going over to Zebra because Zebra, we saw it a few weeks ago, won their first game in the league ever. And you think back in the day, you you put a young team over there because you'd maybe go and do the job. Whereas now you think, well, you put a young team over to Benetton, not probably not to go and do the job because they can easily run a, run a, run a muck over there. But because they maybe thought they weren't going to get a win, and going into Europe, maybe a different focus, rest some boys up for Europe. I'm not too sure. But it was a strange one. Well, well, but like I said, Ospreys did well with some of the young guys. I tell you what. Boys, uh, Nag, Nag, Nagy or Nagy, um, the young fullback for Ospreys. I reckon we'll see him in a Wales shirt in the Six Nations. He's uh, he's been going really well. The way Benetton are going, and they are your dark horses, and you know they make up a lot of the Italian squad, and will make up a lot of the Italian squad for the Six Nations. You've seen them over the seasons. Is there something brewing? Is there something different going on? Or is this just another? They've just they're playing well as a team, but it will be another one of those false dawns for Italian rugby. I don't know because we we thought that we thought they were building towards the World Cup, and then they weren't very good at all. In fact, in times they were bloody embarrassing during the World Cup, weren't they? Um, so I don't know. I just don't know. I think if you put a bit more pressure on them with the relegation stuff in the Six Nations, maybe. Oh, do they need that pressure? Probably not. They, you know, they don't want to be losing every single game in the Six Nations. So um, I'd like to see it, but I can't call it until you would think that'd have an impact. You'd think the fact that Benetton are going so well in the league and there's a lot of Welsh, uh, but Italian players in there. They Benetton, go, have, Benetton have got quite a lot of foreign talent, though, don't they? At the moment, yeah, they've got a few, but they've still got a good core of of the Italian team in there. They've still got a good core of the Italian team in there. So who bloody knows? We don't because we haven't got. A <laughs> is this the best Benetton side you've seen though so far? Oh yeah, yeah. This is, this is yeah. yeah, this is up there. Okay, well, hopefully that's a good thing for our. You know, we're we're fan of the Italians, aren't we? It leaves us with your favourite club, Edinburgh, managing to uh, <laughs> do one over Ulster. Yeah, great. Well done. That's decent. That's a good result. Not for Ulster, it's not. You such a dick. <laughs> such a dick. Very good. Good. Good for me. Very dad of you. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, you're not wrong, Ryan. You're right. You're right. Ulster. Nah, well, yeah. But, but, yeah. Your old mate Kitsy's not going to be happy. Neither's Dan McFarland. Um, 
I'll be honest, I wasn't that interested in it because it was an Edinburgh game, even though I'm commentating for it for them in a few weeks. But um, yeah. Bro, can't I you get know. past that? It's a bit weird now. Come on, man. Nah. No? Nah. Nah. Never. Nah. I mean, who would be your biggest rival club, Max? My biggest rival club? Well, I'm not like a one club man, so I don't have that issue. His biggest rival's at Bath and he played for them. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, I'm not a turncoat. I stuck to my guns. Was... Yeah, you know what? Some of us weren't, weren't being handed Connie's left, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just need a job, mate. God's <laughs> sake. Uh, nah, do you know what? When it, that, That's, yeah, it's been 14 years of it. The biggest games we play were the 1872 Cup matches at Christmas time. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 but you're right, Max. Do you know what, Max? Yeah, I do. I do need to get over it. I think you're right for your career. Well, I think it would just help with your professionalism going forward as a burgeoning the new school of punditry. Well, yeah, okay. It, does it help, or or does it does it bring something a bit different? Because better, I'm just yeah. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. I'm, I'm not. I, you know, when it comes to 1872 club the match mm-hmm. during Christmas, I'm commentating. Barks will be, I'm guessing Barks or Jim Hamilton will be the Edinburgh. It, I think it's better if you have oh, a Glasgow yeah, Warrior yeah. versus, and then you, you could be like, shut mate, that was crap. <laughs> yeah, no, that's nice, actually. That could be good. Yeah, so maybe should we wait until after Christmas for me to start turning and being a little bit nicer about Edinburgh? Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I think that's a good, as long as you've got like a, 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 an, ex, um, an ex-Edinburgh player in the punditry booth with you, I think that's fine. Yeah, not yeah. if you're just so commentating Edinburgh, right? And you just sound like Jay from the end between us being like, well, I could have shagged her twice as hard. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, Glasgow were <laughs> 10 times better for every comment. It's just not going to be conducive to good listening. But anyway, plug this bit in here. Ready, James? Yeah, no, Edinburgh, really good. Jamie Ritchie was on fire, had a few good turnovers. He's uh, he's turned up. And uh, Ulster, I tell you, damn it, Farland is not going to be happy. They don't like losing at home, Ulster. Um, so, oof, crikey, they're under the pump a little bit, but Edinburgh moving up the table and uh, they still won't make the top. <laughs> <laughs> I really want, okay, that needs to be edited not at all, where it's, right, just stick this in. That was good. That was good, though. Yeah, that was your, you know what, that's like your five live when they throw to you at the stadium. <laughs> Except it tailed yeah. off at the end with, they probably won't make it anyway. Max. Max, I've noticed, like, I've spent probably 85% of this show looking at the top of your fucking dome. <laughs> You've had to say a few times, what Max, you, Max. What have you Max, been... I'm fully, I'm fully engaged in our riveting conversation. But Don't what worry. have you been doing? I've been show fiddling. Me. And this day, it was sketching on the back of this rather nice envelope. Look, I've got some kind of pinup and then i've got oh, a potential quite tattoo quite design quite a drawing. another revolver we got like some strange self-portrait look at that that's a sad sad eyes of a man that's lost at seeing Crikey. an existential crisis is upon him right that was me right mark talk to us why are people hearing us early well as efficient as small or nothing always is we've come early onto your phones that's the sound bite that none of us wanted to hear. But we are <laughs> we are early. We are in your head, in your ears, uh, far earlier than usual because, well, first things first, we like to do first all around. Ryan's revolutionizing the punditry world. And we figured more or nothing needs to be doing the exact same thing from the podcast angle and the filmed podcast angle. We are bringing all of the reaction and all of the takes and the hot takes and the hot thoughts on all of the URC and uh, Prem action over the weekend and the talking points. And we're getting it to you earlier, earlier than all of the other podcasts that you're slowly stopping from enjoying because, well, why wouldn't you? And I'll tell you another reason why you just, you're going to not need anything else besides more or nothing, because we're going to be bringing you on a Wednesday well, insights, up close, personal, putting players under the microscope, starting with Harry Randall on Wednesday. It's a very, very fun episode. And we do themes, don't we, Ryan? We yeah. Do. And this week's theme, what is it, Max, with, ha- with Harry Randall? The theme was Coach Journeys. 
What is the weirdest, the most wonderful place of all sort of rugby skullduggery? The away buses. That's where the juicy stuff happens. Tune in to find out more about Harry Randall's, Ryan's and my experience in this wonderful game on those strange, strange vehicles that take us to away games. That's all the time we've got left from Mall or Nothing's Rugby Roundup team of Max, Ryan and myself. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And we will see you all next week. More or Nothing.